For the professionals and artisans who made up the growing middle class, everyday life had more than its fair share of dangers, like exploding toilets and murderous corsets. Nowadays, we take technology for granted. In different eras of human history, technological innovations increased the living standards of life. But things wouldn't always work. Some of the best home inventions, like electricity and refrigerators, ended up taking countless lives. Join us as we look at the deadliest home inventions in history. One is still excessively included in our diet, so stay tuned. During the Victorian era, there was a significant change in the standard of living. It was characterized by a number of groundbreaking scientific discoveries and advancements, as well as the Industrial Revolution, which resulted in a dramatic rise in population and the emergence of a new, wealthy middle class. Ironically, a number of Victorian household items that were hailed for their moral integrity and a part of the mass production scheme of the 19th century were the things that severely affected their home and family. The invention of oil and gas lamps allowed the Victorians to paint their walls in vibrant hues for the first time. The copper arsenite-based green wallpaper created by Scheele was in particularly great demand. The Victorians back then had no idea that this was so harmful. The green pigment was utilized not only in wallpaper, but also in many other commonplace goods, including apparel, home decor, cosmetics, and even colored candy. This may be where the nickname Toxic Green came from. Toys from the Victorian era also had light colors and were frequently painted with lead paint. Children were very likely to have licked or even put lead paint in their mouths because it didn't taste bad. Lead poisoning is possible with just one flake since it affects the nervous system. It can seriously impair a child's growth and result in encephalopathy, a term for disorders of generalized brain dysfunctions. In mild situations, it produced symptoms resembling ADHD. It's common knowledge that Victorian corsets put a lot of pressure on the internal organs, which caused the liver to change shape, the lungs to constrict, and even the uterus to shift. Basic movements were quite unpleasant and made women more susceptible to pneumonia and uterine prolapses. If a woman lacks sufficient vitamin D, her bones might readily distort and her organs could be forced lower. Many women even wore pregnant corsets, which were dangerous for the fetus's growth. One of the most unsanitary inventions of the Victorian era was probably this. All types of life-threatening germs found the ideal habitat in this bottle. The glass bottle had an animal skin teat on it, which was corked onto a rubber tubing. This invention may appear to be excellent in principle. The truth is that they neglected to clean the teat for the two to three weeks it was in use. The bottle was challenging to keep clean, and they used porous materials for the tubing, all of which contributed to the tragic deaths of several helpless infants. Only two kids out of ten survived to their second birthday in the Victorian era. The Victorian era saw the introduction of indoor plumbing. Running water made indoor basins, bathtubs, and toilets a common addition to dwellings, and it was convenient. Public sewage systems, on the other hand, weren't yet fully developed. Methane would build up in the sewers and leak into houses, where it would ignite when it came into contact with candles that were lighted. This may just be where the phrase, blowing up the bathroom, comes from. Back in the day, engineers of the Edwardian era believed they had found a miraculous mineral that was non-flammable, affordable, and pure. In the early 20th century, it was utilized in nearly every aspect of the home including hair dryers, floor tiles, toys, oven gloves, gutters, insulation, and even clothing. The miracle substance, now known as asbestos, was fatal as we now know. The effects of asbestos fibers entering the lungs can be severe. Because it still poses a threat to life, we are still unaware of the exact number of deaths that have been brought on by it. The Edwardians were enchanted and fascinated by the discovery of radium a mysterious new element that provided vitality and brightness. Similar to asbestos, it was utilized in a wide range of goods, including toothpaste, chocolate, suppositories, condoms, cosmetics, and even cigarettes. The Radium Girls were famous for painting glow-in-the-dark watch faces, which were very popular. But as we now know, playing with radium is a surefire way of getting radiation poisoning and, if consumed, can cause leukemia, anemia, bone fractures, and necrosis of the jaw. Next up, the Edwardian era saw the introduction of domestic refrigerators in homes. What an amazing invention it must have been! 
Although they were incredibly helpful and innovative new products that allowed consumers to show off their wealth fashionably, their first designs were tragically faulty. They let off poisonous chemicals, including ammonia, methyl chloride, and sulfur dioxide, which hurt the respiratory system and were potentially fatal in the sudden deaths of members of a house. The invention of electricity was a remarkable innovation. It literally lit up the world. However, at first, people had no idea how to use it. There were even warning signs telling them not to approach the electrical socket with a matchstick. Electronic companies tried to get people interested in electric items, besides lighting, around the turn of the 20th century. Some of those items were extremely flawed. For example, electric tablecloths that lamps could be plugged directly into obviously didn't do well in the event of a water spill. However, the real danger came from consumers attempting to operate multiple appliances from a single outlet, attempting to resolve issues on their own, and uninsulated wires. Homes from the Edwardian era tended to have these problems. Stories of people dying by electrocuting themselves weren't uncommon and were frequently reported in the newspapers. In 1525, there were only 2.3 million people living in England, and the vast majority of them were farmers. But a lot was changing during this time. The influence and wealth of the middle class were rising, as was their standard of living. However, everyday risks might be found in both the country's new discoveries and the connection with medieval methods of living. The wealthiest homes didn't acquire piping for water until the 1580s. Most people had to use a nearby pond or river all year long to get water and wash their hands, clothes, dishes, or themselves. This carried a significant danger. According to reports, drowning was the cause of 40% of accidental deaths in Tudor England. The victims were typically engaged in routine home chores when they lost their balance and were dragged under the river by their bulky woolen clothing. Someone who narrowly avoided drowning in the river might have appreciated the warmth of a new home, thanks to a wonderful new invention called the chimney, which kept smoke to a minimum. But there were also dangers here. Because they were poorly built or were not cleaned on a regular basis, chimneys could easily catch fire, posing a serious threat in a Tudor house. The one saving grace was that timber houses took longer to burn, giving people more time to escape. Thus, rather than dying by fire, most chimney-related deaths were caused by chimneys collapsing on the house's occupants. The new world brought with it its own set of problems. Sugar was a great luxury in the diet of a moderately wealthy Tudor person, but its effects on dental health were dramatic. When 16th century skulls are compared to earlier periods, the sudden appearance of tooth decay, cavities, and abscesses are obvious. With Tudor medicine as it was, it was entirely possible to die as a result of bad teeth. If not sugar, another pleasure could have been the cause of a person's death. Historians debate whether a new disease that caused pustules, lesions, and ate into the bones originated in the New World or if it was the result of a new mutation. Everyone agrees, however, that the terrible symptoms of grape pox were caused by sexual activities. The treatment wasn't much better. If syphilis didn't kill you, mercury poisoning might. It's amazing to see how science and medicine have progressed over the years. Just look at our forefathers and how their lives began to be dominated by mass consumption. We can be thankful to live in a world where we just don't live by trial and error. Would you survive in any of these homes? Let us know in the comments.